Now, Viva Foundation and the Philippine Online Chronicles is a non-stop, non-profit website. Um, so it's not really a business, but our backer is a business. So we, we all know that the internet is a mixed blessing because uh, because of it, we, are, we have access to multimedia. There's YouTube, there's all sorts of other websites that offer images such as Flickr and podcasts. We can pick and choose from what we want and do not want. Um, services are more accessible. Now the government is trying to make itself more accessible. It doesn't always succeed, but there are banks. We can now access online services. Um, it's easier to talk to other people through our blogs, through chatting, and all the other social media. Information is at our fingertips. However, there are privacy and security issues. Um, and sometimes there is information overload. We don't always know if the sources that we are looking at are reliable and if, the fa if they're really factual. And that's uh, one of the pitfalls of the internet. Now, how do we sift through the knot? Traditionally, it is the media's duty to uh, filter the information and present it in such a way that readers will understand there are dodgy newspapers, tabloids, TV programs, radio programs, and news websites. Now, the Philippine Online Chronicles is a news website, and, but it is also a feature channel, and it is not really a straight media organization. It presents information that is a high um, In the age of new media, the portage is no longer limited to media organizations such as PPI, Philippine Star, Bulletin. Now, bloggers are very much a big part of this information flow. More information is available from credible sources. Now, bloggers are now being credited as very much a part of this information flow. They are worthwhile sources of information. Now, citizens can more, this is because citizens can more easily capture and write about historic and newsworthy events happening around the Philippines, around the world. If you notice, many bloggers are becoming um, prime sources of information by readers. Um, for example, there's Mano Lopezon. He, now his Twitter is one of the most important uh, Twitter accounts, I think, on, the, on Twitter because many people subscribe him for the information that he provides. Um, now, now, bloggers and readers can more easily share their stories via social networks and blogs. Now, the difference between news and blog, uh, these are the most important points. In news, there are no opinions allowed in straight reportage. However, in blogs, opinions are expected. Uh, reporters cover by beat, but bloggers don't always do that. They have a, a topic that they want to choose, and then they go everywhere and do anything to get the information that they need. Reporters have to meet a quota each day for bloggers and they can choose what to put up and how much to how much information to broadcast and do that. Now news news organizations as much as possible they try to use primary sources for their news. Bloggers are more uh, liberal. They, their sources can vary. While they also choose to use uh, first hand information, they go to events they interview people, a lot of times it's interpretation. They try to interpret what's happening in a, in a more accessible manner for their readers. Now, what is the new news? This is what the Philippine Online Chronicles tries to present to the readers. It's still, it can be found at www.net. Now, it, are a lot of your pamphlets and primers are actually in your kit. So if you read it, it's very much, uh, it very much shows you what we try to do. We present a traditional mix of traditional news reportage and curation of information from sources. We try to interview new sources as much as possible and contextualize what comes out in the news. We also look for primary sources and make them more accessible to readers. Instead of just saying that this document said this, this bill said this, this law said that. We try to give readers links to access 
to access the, the, the documents themselves so that they can be uh, sure that what's being said is really true. We try to balance and contextualize existing news reports by because some new, because newspapers, as we know, are edited by, uh, for example, what slant the paper wants them to produce. Uh, for example, if the newspaper is uh, traditionally anti-government, then all the news news sources they will choose will be either those people who are not always pro-government. Uh, sometimes it's a one-sided thing. Not always. We try to contextualize these reports by providing not only one source, but all of them. We this discourse among leaders and try to present a non-traditional approach to subjects. So by contextualizing, we try to record viewpoints on the news along with the facts of the news by actively cultivating alternative sources of information, such as blogs, student newspapers, and other publications and multimedia resources because the traditional media is not the only source of credible information. We try to give voices to the people who do not always have it. No. We try to encourage our readers also to talk back to the news, to share their knowledge and collaborate on different levels, making not just a knowledge base for the process of So we, we value our readers' comments very much, and a lot of our stories also come from the comments that our readers give us, for example, um, if a reader uh, complains that he saw this, uh, for example, we put out a story on something that about a government agency that did something bad. And then a lot of readers comment on this. We try to find out if their stories, if the, what their commenters are saying are really true and formulate a whole new story from what the readers are saying. We try to get their blog entries. We try to interview people via Facebook. It's very social media and reader-driven. 